Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, it's, you know, it, 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 it's very painful. When we just heard what the bishop said, and for every preacher, every child of God who enters into the presence of God, you'll be asking yourself this same question. But how did this happen in the house of God? How did this happen in the midst of people calling upon the name of the Most High? But let's all remember that there is evil. God did not say there will not be evil. God did not say there will not be tribulation. But the only guarantee that we have is that we will be conquerors. The devil will snatch your life, but he will not be able to take you away from the presence of God. And there was no better way for people to give up the soul than to give it up in the presence of God. Hallelujah. So, be comforted in your heart. And I think today is a day that we have to bring this message of comfort. We, because God cannot come and speak unto us directly, but all the preachers and all those who have the opportunity to talk to the children of God, they have to talk to God as a father. So I want all of us to understand that God is a father. We are the father. And I strongly believe that today, through my voice, you will hear him speak to you as a father. Hallelujah. So to all the fathers, I want to say happy Father's Day. Amen. Hallelujah. And even to the fathers to be happy Father's Day. It's a glorious thing to be a father and it's a glorious thing to aspire to be a father because our creator is a father by excellence. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's give a mighty shout offering unto God who is our, the father of our life. And I want to also praise God for the life of the father of the house. Amen. Because every house has a father. Amen. Amen. So let's turn our hands to our father. Daddy, happy Father's Day to you. Hallelujah. We are so proud to have a father like you. And we pray that God will continue to bless you and to impart you with wisdom so that you will know how to take care of us, the children that he has put under your guidance. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. So I want us to open our Bible in the book of Genesis chapter 17. We will read from verse 1 to 11. And if somebody can help me with that, I will very much appreciate it. you to to be able to 
people because they are still in the process of trying to sort out what God has made for them. And it is very critical that when you understand that for which God has called you, that you get into it with all the commitment. Because God is calling Abraham and he's going to set Abraham apart so that I, Abraham, will become a father to the nations. That is a blessing. You will be a father to a nation. And the reality is, for every blessing that you have, there is a responsibility. When we look according to the dispensation of the Abrahamic covenant, this is a law covenant. And I want us, because some of us Christians, these days we get stuck onto this covenant. But it's good for you to understand the covenant because we will talk about this covenant and then move on to the new covenant. So that when things are happening, when you start hearing things, you will ask yourself, am I believing the old covenant or am I believing the new covenant? In order to be able to, in order to be able to overcome something, you must understand it clearly. So the old covenant was predicated on you I have this for you, but you need to do this. God told Abraham that their own part of the covenant is they must circumcise. Circumcision was what they had to do. They needed to have a pure heart. And at all times, God expect of us to have a pure heart. Circumcision wasn't an easy thing. Oh no, it, it's not... According to the Jewish tradition, it's not the circumcision that, that we do today. That you go in the hospital, in a matter of a few minutes, it's done and the full skin is removed. No. They used to use, in those days, the circumcision that God is talking here is the one that they use rock. So when you have a baby child, when that child has to be circumcised, they use the stone to peel off and the blood had to spill out. So it tells you how, 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 how difficult it was for man to stand by this old covenant. It wasn't easy. But for God, it was a solution. Although it had that difficulty, it was a solution because man had fallen out of grace. Remember in the Garden of Eden, when God created man, there was still a responsibility. God told man, you can eat everything. But of this tree, you should not. So that was man's own obligation towards the covenant. But man could not keep that obligation. So now when the Abrahamic co uh, covenant came, it became a little bit harder on man. In order for you to be partaker in the Abrahamic covenant, you had to go through spilling your own blood. Because the circumcision occurred with the spilling of blood. And there was, there was a consequence for you failing to comply to that Abrahamic law. And that is where the Bible takes us, and I want us to read in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 21, I mean 31. So God is a great father. He has promised us everything he has promised that he is going to give us a land on which we set our feet because when we come upon him, we accept whatever covenant he has made with our forebears. And because Abraham had to prosper, so was his generation, those after him. But what happened when they failed to respect that covenant? Hallelujah. Amen. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 31. We will read from verse 16. 16 to 18. Is someone there?
29. It says, And the Lord said to Moses, Behold, you will rest with your fathers, and these people will rise and play the hallowed with the gods of the foreigners of the land, where they go to be among them. And they will forsake me and break my covenant, which I have made with them. Then my anger shall be aroused against them in that day, and I will forsake them, and I will hide my face from them, and they shall be devoured. So this is the consequence of not respecting the covenant. When you, when you, when you fail in a covenant where, they are, where everybody has a responsibility, if you fail your own part of the covenant, there is a consequence. And in the Abrahamic covenant, the consequence was God was going to turn his back from his children. And when God turned his back from them, they shall be devoured. So that is what happened in the past. And it didn't please God had. Because when God saw that his children could not keep up to the covenant, he had to do something. Because remember, God created us because he wanted some companion. After God had created everything, so says the Bible, he needed man to fellowship with man. So when you understand the heart of God in everything, God needs us. God wants us to be with him. God loves us. That is why from generation to generation, God has taken the steps to see how he can bring man closer to him. So wherever you are, the purpose of God in your life is that you be close to him. So no matter what the devil does, no matter where you are, there is just one thing that God wants of you. He wants your fellowship. He wants to be a father to you. And he is paying that price. He wants to take care to make sure that you know that he is your father. That is why when God came to the Garden of Eden and could not see Adam and Eve, he was distressed in his heart. And the same thing operates today. When God turns and looks for you and cannot see you, cannot have that fellowship with you, he is troubled in his heart. Don't make a mistake about this. God so loves the world that he gave his only begotten son. Hallelujah. So the love of God is manifested by his desire that you be with him. That you be with him. And because this covenant was difficult to keep, God started walking into the implementation of a new covenant. And that is why he came through the prophets and started announcing the coming of the new covenant. And I want us to go to the book of Jeremiah chapter 31. It's very important for us to understand how the Father loves us. To understand that God is our Father. That He loves us. He so loves us. That He has done a whole lot. That we be with Him. When you get to Jeremiah 31, chapter 31, I want us to read from verse 31 to 34. Hallelujah. So this is God preparing the way towards the new 
new covenant. The covenant that I made with Abraham, if you have failed it, 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 it's us, it's the humans that failed God. And then God still went ahead and said, no, I need to fix this. Because I need my people. I want my people to be with me. And in order for me to get there, I need to make a new covenant. See, only a covenant can override another covenant. So in order for us to get away from the Abrahamic covenant, God had to bring in a new covenant. It's just like nations. If you sign a treaty with a nation, if that, in order for that treaty to be broken amicably, you guys have to come back into agreement to sign a new treaty. And God comes in and says, I am going to make a covenant. See, this is going to be an eternal covenant. Hallelujah. Because we are moving towards there. But I want to set the basis for you to understand that the covenant that God is preparing this time, it's a covenant that we will not be able to break it. And we will understand why we cannot break this covenant. Partly because God is making a covenant in which he is taking full responsibility. God has understood our nature that in everything that he does, my people, they'll still be weak. But how can I make it convenient? Hallelujah. Remember, when Moses died, the Bible says, since the devil came and was fighting for the soul. So, when you are out of covenant with God, it means the devil has authority over you. So, the claim that the, the devil had over Moses, that thought, the claim that the devil thought he had over Moses, is because he thought that Moses had forsaken God's covenant. Hallelujah. So, that is why God, the covenant with God is very, very important. Because once you get out of the covenant, you are no more under God's protection. Because it is that covenant that gives the seal of authority to God when the devil comes in. He says, no, I have a business with this guy and he has kept his own part of the deal and I promise him protection. So if you want to attack him, then you have to face me. Hallelujah. So when you get into that covenant with God, it means God is taking over all your struggles. God is not saying that you will not struggle. They say, no, I will fight your fight. I will be your God. I will be your father. You can't get to Joseph or Godwin or George or Kelly. You have to pass through me to touch any one of them. And that is what the father does. So in order for you to touch a child of God, you have to cross over God. And that is why it's very important for us to understand the covenant that we have with God. So he says this time, I am going to have a new covenant. And it says, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their mind and write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they will be my people if God calls you my people nothing can happen to you are you really called a people of God that is the question because God can only be a God of his people and what does it take to be part of that people of God that's what we would have. And the good thing about this covenant, if we read, and I'll, I'll, I'll just give you the passage you'll read later, in uh, Jeremiah 32, 38 to 40, it is an eternal covenant. So it's a covenant that will never change. So, after all, after God had tried everything, he arrived at the point where he said, this one is going to be an eternal covenant. An unbreakable covenant. That is the covenant that we have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
And do you want to know this new covenant? It is a covenant that is sealed with the blood of Jesus. It is a covenant where Jesus Christ is the representation. And let's open up a Bible in the book of Matthew chapter 12. And I want someone to read this. If you are there, Matthew 12, you read from 17 to 21. Just save you as 
much as you are willing to be saved. Glory be to God. The Savior can only save you as much as you are willing to be saved. If you are not willing to be saved, the Savior can't do anything for you. If you are in trouble, somebody sends a hand to take you out of the dish, you only come out of the dish as much as you send your hand and you hold the person's hand firm to get out of the dish. If you don't send your hand, the person can't get you out. And if we cannot repent of our sin, then we cannot be take partakers of the redemption that Christ is bringing. So Jesus Christ is representing that redemption to man. And when we go in the book of Hebrew, chapter 8, he says something very great about this, this new covenant. He talks about the covenant being made under better conditions. So what was the difficult condition that existed with the previous covenant? It was difficult for man to keep it. But the, co the covenant that we have now in Christ is better because Christ does the work. Hallelujah. The work of your salvation is done already. Access it through repentance. You have no work to do when it comes to your salvation. Because if you think that you have something else to do for your salvation, it means Christ died on the cross for nothing. The cross was painful death. So why would Christ, who had no sin, go through all that pain? It's for you and me that Christ took that pain. And that is the heart of a father. A father does over time work for the children. Hallelujah. A father works two jobs to make sure that there is bread on the table. Those double sheep as you call it. Hallelujah. So at times when I see the heat on those fathers that work double work, I say, hey, let's wait a little bit. Some father needs to do that, especially in this country. When you just come in this country, you have a $10 job an hour, what can you do with it? When you take it, that's your rent. So it means we should be more responsible parents. Hallelujah. That is that which God has called us to do. When God calls you as a father, just as I see my brother Clovis, that some days I ask where he is, he will say, no, it's hard. I say, praise God, you are doing God's work. Because taking care of your family is part of God's work. Glory be to God. We must take care of our family. Because if your family goes through the crack, you would have failed. But remember, who gives you the power to do that work? It is God. So you cannot do that work and turn your back away from He who gave you the power. So I always say, do the work, but don't forget who gives you the power. Because if you need that work to keep your family going, may God bless you and give you more strength. And feel yourself proud, have pride in you that you are doing the right thing. Because it wasn't easy for God. That thing that they call Father, it takes a lot of responsibility. Yes. God did not just sin and say, I'm going to be the father of these people. No. He did. He gave the sacrifice. The sacrifice of his son. So when you, if you take the fatherhood of God lightly, be careful. And that's what judgment did for all those who take the fatherhood of God lightly. There shall be no mercy for them. Because he went too far into paying the price to be a father. To the point where there can be no excuse for those who don't embrace him as that father. Hallelujah. Amen. Fatherhood is not only in words. It's in deeds. Amen. It's what you do. If you are careless and you can't send your, ch your children to school, then you are an irresponsible father. And 
Lord, and I condone with you. A father puts a roof over the house and protects his children. We have a roof. Yeah, the church is a roof over our head. And Christ is the embodiment of that roof. God gave us Jesus Christ. That is why Jesus Christ is, we call the church the body of Christ. That's the gift of God. And as I was saying, God did the heavy lifting. With a new covenant, everything became new. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17. In Jesus Christ, everything is new. Read from verse 